This video is sponsored by Mammoth Interactive. Take your skills to the next level at mammothinteractive.com. Check the links down below for some amazing deals. Hey everybody, welcome to this tutorial. This tutorial I'm going to show you how to add in some nanite items here, as well as we're going to talk about some nanite features, okay? So first things first, I'm just going to move this guy back a bit. Uh, and the second thing we need to do is we need to import them. Now, I have imported literally everything that I've, I've done here off screen. And the reason for that is simply because Nanite is huge, okay? So if you don't already know, you can go and open up the Quixel bridge here. And I've downloaded a few items here. So the first, these two items, the massive Nordic cliffs and the beach. And you, I've also downloaded them with, with the Nanite quality, okay? And um, you can see here, that uh, you have that option here, download it and add it, and there you go. And the other one that I have, uh, if I can search it here, is the statue. Statue. Now, it is a bit laggy, and whenever I make anything on, uh, uh, or record anything, it's gonna be a little bit more laggy. So I do have this guy here. Um, you can download pretty much anything you want. Now, I should uh, I should also mention, so once you have that, let's hop back in here and let's take a look at a couple things here. So what that should happen is once you have everything in your, or downloaded everything, it should be in your Mega, uh, Mega Scans folder and under the 3D assets. Now, I have a bunch of other ones that I've downloaded in a different tutorial here, but let's take a look at the beach first. Now, it took a long time. <laughs> A very very long time to uh, to to render this. Uh, I shouldn't say it's that long here, but you can basically uh, drag it out here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of move it up just a bit, like so. All right, and then move it up. And then what you can also do is you can kind of move it down a bit. And this is probably what you would want to do because this is actually the way it works on an actual beach by the way, and you can see here that, you know, that looks pretty good um, in terms of rocks, all right? But anyway, um, I'm actually quite impressed that this works at all. So Nanite is really amazing, and I'm going to show you why it's so amazing. But let's add in the Nordic Cliffs here, and if you're wondering how these people make things that look so good, is what they do is they kind of just add in a bunch of the same kind of assets here and I'm just kind of rotating them and then you can kind of move them around rotate kind of thing and you can basically do this you know as much as you want and I'm just gonna for time's sake I'm just gonna kind of move things out over here so you can kind of see you know if you just kind of do this and then you rotate them ever so slightly they kind of look like different rocks and you can even rotate them all the way around like that if you want. But let's just do this for now, because this is a very basic one here. And you can see that this looks pretty good, right? Obviously, this is the exact same rock. But, you know, not bad. Not bad. This little square thing is what really gives it away. All right? And last but not least, let's take a look at the the statue. Now, the reason why I'm pulling out the statue, uh, and I'm just going to uh, scale it up a bit something like that here, is we're going to take a look at what Nanite really is, okay? And in order to do that, let's hop into the lit here, or this uh, this bar here, and let's just go to the overview. Now, what this is going to do is this shows you all the cool things that Nanite does. And the one thing that I want to take a look at is the clusters. And you can go back into the clusters here, and you can see that this is how Nanite works. So, if I move in, you can see that these clusters get more detailed. And as I move away, you know, you can see that, you know, uh, it's getting less detailed. And uh, this is how Nanite works. Essentially, there's if you're so far back here, there's no point in rendering anything um, that's super detailed, right? And then if you move really close, it does get more detailed. And the statue in particular, and the reason why I wanted to add the statue is because this one 
is the most uh, most detailed of all of these here. The, like when you think about it, rocks don't need to be detailed, but a statue or something human made is probably detailed. I'm wondering if I can get as close as I can. It's, but nevertheless, focus on the statue, and you can see that it's getting less and less detailed as time goes on or as you get farther away. Right, and then you can basically do everything here. So for example, you can take a look at all the triangles. Now, since I've been in game development for many, many, many years, right? You can see that the triangles, like this is a lot of triangles. <laughs> I remember when like, there might be this many triangles in an entire level, right? Uh, but you can see that, you know, even as you zoom in to the statue, the triangles do change a bit, okay? And all of these things here, um, are needed to make a good nanite scene. So you have your triangles, your clusters, you have your instances, so you can see what is different, the different amount of primitives, that's basically the items here. Material complexity, you know, you can have all of these different, um, uh, all these different items here. Like you can see like which ones are different with colors. It's very, very nice. So if you're if you're in, really into level design, you're more than welcome to take a look at that here. But essentially, this is again the nanite version, and it's really uh, all of these models are pretty big. Like I think just one of these is almost a gigabyte of space. I mean, it's it they're huge. So going back to Quixel Bridge, if you're not making things, you know, if you're just testing things out, maybe do the medium quality. You don't need to do the nanite quality unless you're trying to do some nanite stuff. It is incredibly CPU intensive. But one of the things I wanted to talk about is, is let's open this up here. Now, there's a couple things uh, that we can do. Uh, the first things first is that you don't actually have to enable nanite. You can just simply unclick that and then apply the changes here, right? So nanite doesn't have to be there, although this is going to, I actually, I don't even know what this is. Uh, really going to do uh, to everything here. It might make things horribly, horribly inefficient, but you essentially do want to keep that enabled if you want to use Nanite. Now, let's say you find something that's of this quality statue um, on a uh, on something like a, uh, a 3D asset store. And in the past, if you found something really detailed, um, okay, so as you can see, I disabled Nanite and this doesn't look as good, right? So let's re-enable that, by the way. So there we go. Looks a bit better. Uh, you want to keep that, that going on here. Now, you can also have the precision. So the auto precision is probably what you want to do. So if you're doing some kind of like render on a specific shot, you might pick something like this. Um, so, uh, and this is how, uh, you know, detailed those triangles can be. Right, nevertheless, um, so if you ever had, so this is a pretty detailed statue, by the way. So if we were to just look at this here, you know, that, uh, this particular kind of stuff, like this is almost something you would see in real life somewhere. And I, in fact, you can actually do that now. You, there's uh, there's cell phone apps that will, you can basically take a 3D spin around an object and it will uh, make this here. And that's how a lot of 3D assets are made. But what I was trying to say before is that uh, in the past, if you've, uh, found a asset that was too high poly, you you couldn't put it into your game because it was just impossible. But now you can do that. So let's say this asset was not a part of the Quixel Mega Scans uh, library. Uh, it was just something you bought online. Well, all you have to do is click that enabled uh, for Nanite and you get all of the mesh optimizations. And that's really what Nanite comes down to. Nanite is mesh optimization and detailed optimization uh, to make things look amazing. Now, another thing you can do is I'm just going to scale this statue up quite a bit here, okay? And then let's move it over. And you'll start to see there's a couple things that we could talk about here. You know, another thing about statues uh, as a sidebar here is that if you kind of put that um, here, right? You know, 10 degrees is probably a bit too much, but you know, you can kind of put this down like this. Because, you know, ruins tend to, to sink sometimes. And so let's kind of hop into the rotation here. Let's maybe make this, you know, uh, 5 and negative 2. 
So you can kind of see that it's just a little bit off kilter. So that doing stuff like that will um, will make your your ruins look a little bit more authentic, All right? But anyway, if if I go into here, it, even though this is you know zoomed up quite a bit, um, you know it's still fairly detailed unless you get really close to it. So that's pretty neat. I think that's really really cool, um, personally, right? And you can see that the rock. You know, if we didn't zoom up on this particular statue, you know, you can see it's getting a little bit pixelated, but, you know, that's usually what happens in video games anyway, right? So to that extent, we scaled up the rocks quite a bit as well, and they, they still look pretty good, right? I mean, again, they're just rocks, but, you know, they still look pretty good. Now, should you scale things up? Um, well, maybe this is a bit of an extreme. Right, like we could maybe even make this bigger, but I might, um, I probably wouldn't scale things up this much. I might scale things up something like this, and that looks quite a bit better. Right, you can see the details here. If so, it's up to you what you want to do. Okay, so that is a, a quick example of what Nanite can can do for you. Uh, it's pretty impressive, and I would say that if there's anything that if you're on the fence uh, for making things in the Unreal Engine or Unity, I would say that this is a, a complete uh, deal breaker for me, for Unity, that is. Just because it's so incredibly impressive what they've done. Um, as a person who's been developing games for, you know, almost 15 years now, uh, well, actually, it's been for a long, long that, but like, you know, professionally 15 years, this is so impressive. I really wish I had this, you know, when I was in my 20s. Because the games I could have made back then were so good. All right? Like, look at that. That's absolutely amazing. All right? So, there we go. That's a quick introduction to Nanite. Um, remember that you don't want to download everything uh, because it is pretty CPU intensive. And if you're looking to buy a new computer, buy the one with the biggest hard drive. Shell out that extra money. This computer that I'm on, I actually skimped on the hard drive a bit. Now I have an external hard drive. Uh, so so definitely buy something probably in the one to two terabyte range. Uh, if, you, if you can afford a five terabyte one, I would do that. Um, just because these assets get quite, to be quite big. And uh, there's also recommendations on your, um, on, on the site about what kind of uh, computer you need. And I would definitely not skimp um, for now. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video. If you really like this video, you can buy our content down below. It really does help us out when you buy our content down below because this channel doesn't do a Patreon. Instead, we sell our digital products down below. If you really like this channel, you could subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. We release 20 to 60 hours of fresh new content per month every single month. We release everything from Adobe tutorials to 3D modeling tutorials to game development tutorials to machine learning tutorials to web development tutorials and more. We're constantly pushing the bounds in e-learning and if we can get to 10,000 paid subscribers per month, we can become the best e-learning company on the planet. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.